Okay, uh, there's another question here about resources that discuss decision models on treatment hours for direct therapy and supervision. Um, meaning like, are there any resources that exist or any articles that exist for how many treatment hours a kiddo should get? So, you know, once you've done enables or BB map or even just an initial intake assessment, how do I know if a kid needs 20 hours a week versus 40 hours a week versus two hours a week? Um, and how do I know like what the frequency of sessions should be? Etc. Um, it's, you know, she's really looking at it to ensure patients protection from insufficient um, service delivery or too much excessive service delivery. And how do you make that evidence based treatment decision. And I was like, really, really great question. And I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Anybody else? Shira? Does anybody else have anything? Have they read any articles? Like, I mean, way back when, you know, Lovast, Tristan Smith, they're all like, oh, you know, kids who are young, early intensive intervention, you know, 20, 40 hours a week, blah, blah, blah. That's exactly what they need. You know, insurance companies fund, you know, based on that. But if kids don't need that because, you know, they're in school or they're already verbal or they're, you know, already compliant and what have you, like, how do you determine that? How do other people determine that? Um, where, where we live, I don't know if this applies to everywhere, but I think it is also somewhere on the board's website that the different types of ABA, like they divide it into almost three categories. There's comprehensive ABA, which is like that 40 hour a week, what used to be called IBI here. And it's that intensive, um, comprehensive ABA. The next one would be focused. So that would be something like, I don't know, 15 to 20 hours a week of ABA, which might be like a supplement to another program, or if they're in daycare or preschool, then they may do 15 to 20 hours. And the other one is consultative. So consultative would be like, I'm coming in to tackle like this issue. So just toilet training or just eating or just sleeping or things like that. So I think it, in, in my mind, it makes sense to, you know, based on an assessment, kind of group the child into one of those three categories, which then gives you the rationale to the parents. You can say, well, they scored X, Y, and Z on this assessment, and they have these, this skill level, and they're able to do this, or they're not able to do that, which is why I'd group them into this category. And then you have a little bit of leeway. So then in like the focus, you know, you could say, well, you could, depending on budget, finances, scheduling, I would recommend 20 hours or 10 hours. Um, and I think at the end of the day, it's really like a clinical decision. I don't know that there's any black and white answer that this is, you know, when they have this score, then they need 26 hours. Um, I don't know how it works with insurance companies. It might be a little bit more detailed, but at least here, I know with a lot of families that I speak with, it's really just a conversation of like, this is my recommendation. You know, I have some kids who are early intervention, they're young learners, and they've been doing an hour a day because it was their first experience with ABA. They were two years old. The parents were like not really ready for more than that. And they were in another program. And then, you know, it's a couple months later and they're like, you know, I'm not really seeing the progress I want to see. And um, I, I just, I think he needs more. So we're taking like a chunk of time and we're going to say, okay, over the summer, he's going to get 40 hours a week. And we're tracking progress. And if this is what he needs to benefit, then we'll continue with the 40 hours a week. So it's a little bit of trial and error. And it's a little bit of just a clinical decision and conversation based on parent goals, based on your goals, based on time, scheduling, finances. Um, there isn't really a right or wrong. I think what we find is that we often have parents who want to hold on to those hours who say, no, my kids been getting, you know, 30 hours a week for so long. And we're trying to get them into school and into the community and backing off of those hours because it's in the child's best interest. And sometimes it's hard for parents to let go of those hours, which almost sounds like this is what this person is asking about, a way to say, well, they wouldn't qualify for these reasons, or the research suggests this. Um, I wish that existed because then our lives would be so much easier. Um, I just don't think it does. And I think um, depending on how it's funded and paid for, sometimes the parents just have the last say and you could say you know what ethically I can't agree to do this um if it's very black and white if it's gray it's kind of like you know I have some students like this where the parents are holding on and they still want their kid to come and we can still make the most of it which is fine it's not what I would suggest as an ideal situation but we continue to make the most of it and I guess at the point where I think it's unethical and I don't think that's the case then we may, you know, have to have a conversation, but it, it is just, it's tough. Like there's no right or wrong. I always look at what the kiddos, I say child, but it could be youth. It could be whoever, 
whoever that individual is, what else are they doing during the day, right? So how are they filling their days right now? And are they learning, period? So, you know, if you've got a young child who is going to preschool and they're, say, an intermediate learner, or I've, you know, categorized them as that in terms of they've got some language, they're starting to copy peers, they're watching, they're starting to do a few things in a group environment, then preschool is probably a really great spot for them part-time, you know, so they do preschool part-time and ABA part-time, you know, because you've got that kind of learner, you know, I'm not going to suggest 40 hours a week because I really do think they should be in school. However, if I can get somebody in school, like a paraprofessional to be able to shadow, to be able to, you know, set up situations with peers, feedback, et cetera, then that is still classified as ABA, just a different kind of ABA. And that would be, yeah, absolutely we can do 40 hours because half of it will be in the daycare. Um, if I've got a student who is a very, very early, early learner, not learning from a group environment, et cetera, and, uh, you know, maybe, you know, enrolled in preschool right now and then spends, you know, the rest of the night on the iPad because he has no play skills, et cetera. You know, that's what I'm going to say. You really need a lot of ABA because I don't want you, you know, inside your own head. We need to get you out into, you know, out into the world um, or just out of your head, period. So, you know, that's what I look at. Like Shira said, you know, if you've got a student who's school aged who really is transitioning or should be transitioning to a group environment and can be successful learning from a teacher, you know, that's when you start to fade hours. Or if you've got a student who is language is amazing, you know, off the charts on the ables, um, but needs a few tweaks in social skills, you know, that student doesn't need 20 or 30 hours a week. They would just need, you know, some social skills groups or, you know, five hours to work on, you know, a few subtle skills, this and that and what have you. Um, you know, and then looking at the rest of the picture too, like parent coaching, right? Do the parents need some skills? Um, parent support, you know, maybe they need some support around life skills like toileting or sleeping or eating, et cetera. So really looking at that full picture to get an idea of the number of hours. Yeah, and then the other part of the question was, and then the supervision. So what's like the standard in terms of involvement of supervision? Um, I think the general rule for us is 10%. I think that might also be on the board's website, which is 10% of the hours that the, that the student is receiving should be um, supervised. And it should be, it doesn't have to all be in person, but I think the bulk of it should really be in person. And I think if the, if this, the client is needing a lot more hours than that, um, then you may want to like reassess, like as to like what's going on or how many, are they getting the right amount of hours? I know we had some questions with parents who were confused because the BCBA was there every single session and that was getting expensive. And that's not, I don't think how it's meant to be. Um, so we usually think about it as 10% of the hours that they're getting. 